Miles, a channel that is all about inspiring others to enjoy life one mile at a time. We have a very, very special Jammin' on the Run episode tonight. We have our first guest, and we did not pay him. He is here voluntarily. So we are very excited to welcome Christopher Savio. He is a member of our Big Runners group, and he's here to talk about the Chicago Marathon. But first, let me introduce the others. As always, we have the lovely Megan. Hello. And we have Rob. Yo. <laughs> and we have Jackie, who has some hashtag joyful milestones to share. So go ahead, Jackie. All right. So we just want to give a shout out to some of our followers that reached some joyful milestones this week. First, I want to say congratulations to Kelly Seymour, who ran the Chicago Marathon as well as you, Chris. So congratulations. And also congratulations to Kelly Jean, who ran her first half ever. She was really excited because her 5K portion of the race and her 10K portion, she PR'd. So it was a really good run for her. Congratulations. And also to Anne Romagnolo. I hope I said your last name. I don't correct. think you did. Romagnolo. Romagnolo. I'm sorry. She loves us. It'll be all right. <laughs> Anyways, congratulations because you finished your first half marathon. Yay! And um, it followed her adventure and her journey on her blog as well. Yeah, it's Heart of a Single Mom. So, awesome. thank you guys. Congratulations. Yes, congratulations. And I will be sure to put the link to Anne's blog right up on her race adventure below. And for Kelly, let me get this out of the way. I was actually supposed to run the Chicago Marathon with Kelly. I am injured. If you want all the depressing details, I did a big blog write up on that this past Tuesday. The link will be below. But you know what? We're not going to talk about that. We're going to get right to Chris, who had an amazing adventure, and we cannot wait to hear all about it. Yeah, great. I'm excited to tell everyone about it. Awesome. Thank you again for being here. Of course. So, so Rob, you're going to start us off with uh, some questions that we have for Chris. Yeah, so I thought, Chris, since you're kind of new to the, the, the show here, why don't you give us a little bit of a background of your, your running expertise? This was not your first marathon, correct? Nope. Um, so I used to run a while ago, uh, a lot like in high school, and then uh, in college it was really just not to gain a lot of weight. Um, and then uh, I stopped for a very a considerable amount of time, probably – maybe like eight years or so. Um, and my wife started running a few things. She actually ran uh, a princess half, uh, and then she somehow talked me into starting up again. Um, my first race was a Twilight Zone Tower, the 10-miler. I think it was the inaugural 10-miler. Uh, and I've been hooked again ever since. So that was 20, 2012, I guess. And so uh, this marathon was my fourth. I've uh, got a handful of halves in there, 5Ks, 10Ks. Um, and now I'm, I've got the bug again and I'm addicted. So, so what, what made you think Chicago? I got to run Chicago. Um, so I wanted to do one of kind of the bigger major, uh, ones uh, and it had a, from everything I had heard, it was both a great race from crowd standpoint, course wise. Uh, and it's also most friendly to people that didn't have, uh, times to submit to get in. So from a lottery standpoint, uh, I know New York does a lottery as well, but from what I've heard, that's a little more difficult to get in. I think if I didn't get into Chicago, uh, I probably would have either done Marine Corps Lotto or the New York Lotto. Um, but Chicago is definitely my first choice, and I also love getting out to Chicago. So, so let's talk about your training because you did. I mean, you've done a lot of Disney races, and mm -hmm. admittedly, those aren't as intensive training-wise because they're a much more laid-back atmosphere. Yep. How did you approach training for Chicago? Did you do anything different from your normal Disney routine? Do you follow a particular training plan? What What was yeah. your process leading up? Um, so kind of going back a little bit. So last year I had set kind of a goal for myself um, earlier in the year that I wanted to do a certain time for a half marathon. Uh, so I it was the BA half last year, um, and I followed a certain training plan. It was a 16-week training plan. It was kind of the first very diligent combination of speed training as well as endurance training that I had done before. Uh, and so it followed a similar timeline for the marathon. So I had kind of achieved my goal for the half marathon that I had last year at the BAA. I wanted to get sub two and I was able to do that. So I was like, okay, let's turn to kind of the next hurdle, which was, um, you know, a, a sub four uh, marathon. 
So uh, I did follow a plan. It was kind of a Nike Plus plan um, that was put out by the Chicago Marathon. I had looked at a few other ones between like the Hal Higdon's or the 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 uh, Bert Yasso's or other ones. Um, this one seemed most up the alley of what I wanted to do from a time commitment as well as uh, skill level. So this plan did basically how it was broken up. You had uh, two days a week that were kind of a combination of either interval or track work. Um, and then another day, which was either kind of tempo runs um, or hill work. So those were kind of meant to build up a little more speed um, and kind of muscle building. And then there was an endurance run, so the longer run on a weekend. And then you were supposed to throw in one or two other days a week, kind of a, kind of a recovery run between like three or six miles. Um, so it worked a lot better with my schedule. So it was kind of an 18-week plan. A lot of uh, a lot of interval training and kind of aggressive speed work. So I think from a speed standpoint, um, I definitely got faster. Um, Endurance-wise, I think I probably could have thrown some longer runs in there maybe during the week, uh, and that may have helped me out in the longer run for the actual race. Uh, but it was it was a good plan. I think interval work definitely. If anyone's looking to kind of lose weight or get fit, interval work is definitely something to do. Um, I Throughout my training of it, I didn't want to lose any additional pounds or anything like that, but I accidentally lost a decent amount of weight. At least that's kind of what my, my wife told me, just from kind of interval training, which I guess that tends to do for you. Your your calorie intake needs to be up. So if you're doing training like that, I, I highly recommend upping your, your calorie intake. So what was your longest training run? Um, I got a 21 miles uh, four was it four, four weeks before the race? Uh, I got up to 21 miles. So there was a little bit. It was kind of, it would take, uh, I think when they started getting longer, it was like 14 miles, 16, step back to 14, 16, 18, step back to 14, 20 to 22, your choice. And then it dropped down like 16, 12, 10 before the race. And I think, you know, when people think of marathons, they say, I don't have the time to train for that. I have a job. I have a life. So you're saying that there is a training program out there for anybody, regardless of schedule, that can get you prepared for a marathon. I think so. Um, I think it, it, you know, it is going to be commitments. I mean, there were definitely runs that I was doing, you know, at 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night and runs at 4.35 in the morning, um, you know, taking longer lunch breaks. You know, the, the weekday runs, once you start kind of getting into them, they're not, they, they get to be happy for me. It is those weekends ones that definitely can, you know, when you're getting up to, two, three hour runs that it definitely, I'm sure, as you all well know, kind of oh, yeah. takes up those whole days, especially when yard work and other stuff needs to get done and then it never does. Yeah. Did you do anything different diet-wise? Um, no. I, uh, I, don't, uh, <laughs> I, I don't consider myself a healthy eater, but I'm also not kind of a, a fast food eater. I kind of just eat normal in general. I'm a, I'm a, a heavy meat eater. I'm not a vegetarian or anything like that. Um, but I also wouldn't go out and have like, you know, McDonald's or anything like that. It's just not my normal diet. So I didn't, didn't really change anything different. Um, hindsight, maybe I should have, as I mentioned, kind of started upping my calories a little bit because I think I was burning them off a lot faster with some of the training plans, but something to know for next time. Always something to learn. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so next time I'll, I'll ask that question is what, what do you have planned for next time? What do you have another one that you're scheduled to do? Uh, not right now. Um, I'm kind of thinking about that more because I didn't get uh, the goal that I wanted in this race. I told myself if I didn't, I would run another one. So now I'm kind of looking to figure out when and where I'd want to do my other one. I would like to do Chicago again. I thought it was great. Um, I hear good things about the Marine Corps, uh, one down in D.C. Um, uh, the Big Sur looks like a really cool race as well in the San Francisco Marathon. So there's a few other ones in other cities that, that I'm going to start looking at probably, you know, for a year from now or give or take, and, and we'll see. Um, and then there's Disney in January, but like I said, that's more kind of fun and enjoyable. <laughs> so focusing are you, on... Are you, on sorry, are you doing this January? Yep, yep, doing uh -huh. the, the Goofy again, yep. Nice. So just focusing on Chicago. So starting with the... Let's start with the um, the expo and yeah. the packet pickup and everything. Was that any different from what you've experienced prior in either your regular races or run Disney races or anything stand yeah. out to you? Um, it was awesome. Uh, the from so so keep in mind there are 
I think this year there were 43, 44,000 people registered for wow. Chicago. So I think wow. it's the second wow. second largest in the U.S. to New York. Wow. I think third largest in the world. I'm not sure whether it's Berlin or London that's bigger. Um, but uh, so being in Boston, I've definitely gone down to the expo here before. Um, so I have seen kind of one of these majors and how they run. The one thing, and Rob, you'll kind of know this, the Heinz Convention Center where they hold the expo out there. It's It's small. Yes, for what right. they have there. Where is the uh, Chicago one? So it's at, it's one of their expo centers just south of um, Soldier Field. I don't remember the name of it anymore, but it, it is a huge complex. So I where mean, were you is, staying relative to, where are you staying in Chicago? Uh, so we stayed in the River North area. So anyone that's not familiar with it, there's kind of a river that cuts right through kind of the downtown area of it, of, uh, of Chicago. Um, it's a, it's, where the magic the magic mile miracle mile magic mile whatever the heck it's called michigan ave kind of miracle runs mile. through the miracle, miracle miracle mile yeah there Isn't we it go the magical mile no i yeah, think it's the magic good. not one of them <laughs> i think it's the magic <laughs> mile um where kind of all the shopping and everything is um so it's kind of a very densely populated high rises and stuff but it's a very touristy area in general too so it's a combination so that's kind of in a key area uh from there but there's uh they were running shuttles from those areas down to where the the expo was um and was that for like all the hotels did you see like was there any like pretty easy to get to the expo yeah so they had uh they had these shuttles running in from so i think there were a few four different drop-off points there was kind of one uh a little bit south right on the river there was one a little bit north where we where we were staying um one slightly west-ish and then one kind of on the south side area um they had in advance, they did have some hotels that they were kind of race hotels. We ended up staying at one of those because it was a good deal compared to the other prices in the city. Because uh, with Columbus Day weekend, um, prices were actually fairly expensive. So we got a good deal on this one. So they had these, you know, yellow school buses running back and forth. That was kind of the first time I had been on a yellow school bus in a very long time. Oh, so really? Seats are, those seats are very tiny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, so getting to the expo was super easy with that. It was a they had a two day expo. We went on the first day uh, relatively early in the day, um, but uh, yeah. So I mean, the expo itself. The one thing I kind of noticed from an organization standpoint, as soon as you walked in, uh, you go over to these kind of location. Tons of iPads set up. You show them there's kind of a QR code on your registration packet that they emailed you a few weeks before, and you can scan that on your phone or a piece of paper. They scan that in, and then they tell you a booth to go over to. So they had 18 kind of desks set up, and as you walk over, the person says, Chris, and they hand you the packet. So it's kind of literally just one to another. You don't have to do anything. Like, I was walking from a distance, and he, like, said my name. So it was kind of <laughs> pretty impressive. That's pretty Their whole runner communication, I mean, I couldn't go, obviously, but the communication, the emails, they have an app. Their runner yep. communication is definitely A++. Yeah, no, the app was fantastic too, and I'll touch on. I can touch on that in a little bit when we talk more about the race. But it was uh, that was great. And then what they do is, as a smart kind of marketing person, I guess would tell you, then to go pick up your actual bag and shirt, you have to walk through the whole expo, which is you know probably four hundred meters long of just you know all the booths and everything. So you're distracted and stopped along the way. <laughs> Was there any like unique merchandise that you saw, or any unique vendors that you haven't seen before? Um, yeah, so this one, so this race is sponsored by Nike. Um, so there was a huge kind of Nike section in the middle with all the kind of Nike swag and the race merchandise. I actually have my little shirt that I'm wearing. I don't know if you can kind of tell it from yeah. there, but I'm, I'm a sucker. Yeah. I'm a sucker for the race swag. So I got a warm up and I got a, a kind of just a, a dry fit shirt as well. Um, was it the so, personalized one I saw you posing with? <laughs> no, but that one was it was pretty <laughs> awesome. I didn't I didn't end up getting that one, but uh, I thought, thought that was a sign. <laughs> <laughs> if that was me, uh, I would have been all over that. I, I would have I would have bought everything. I, I would have just taken it right off. Yeah, but what they had, I guess they set up you could if you bought one of those shirts, then you could just go get it um, customized with whatever you wanted. The line to get it customized was an hour and a half long. So oh. Oh, I was gonna pass yeah. on that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they had kind of all the big uh, shoe brands had their own rather large setups there. So between Nike, Saucony, uh, New Balance, um, I think uh, um, Hoka had one. Uh, I think Newton had a, one set up. I mean, so there was a lot of the kind of the major shoe brands were all 
kind of set up with their own uh, locations. Um, there's a localish running store. I think they have other locations too called Fleet Feet, uh, mm-hmm. which is kind of the the store that's big in Chicago. They have four or five locations. So they kind of had like the big setup there. So if you think about it, to run Disney races, um, that uh, what's the store down in uh, that's to oh, run yeah. Disney? That, fit to run? Yeah, fit. So you, th- you know, fit to run usually has like four or five booths set up with you know discounted merchandise. That's what this Fleet Feet had. They had a, a number of booths set up where you can buy all their kind of different uh, different merchandise. Um, they also have, which was nice, the uh, local Goose Island Brewery had like they have this traveling bus that usually they just drive around the city and give out beer from. So they had that pulled in there, and you could go on the bus, and you got free beer, and oh, nice. got off. So that was kind of nice, too. Free beer? Yeah, Rob's free attention. Rob, Rob's <laughs> ears just peaked up. I might be going to Chicago. He's like, I'm <laughs> signing up next year. <laughs> um, so that was nice. And then um, I think, you know, there was a lot of other kind of smaller local booths and stuff like that, you know, whether races. Um, there was uh, Laughing Cow Cheese now has these little – cheese like if you remember those handy snacks from a long time ago they're now having these like little individual handy snack things so it's kind of almost like an adult handy snack they were giving those out to everyone there uh yeah so i I guess those it was it was a great expo it was so much space so this place was gigantic so you were completely spread out and with you know however many people were in there when uh when we were in there it it didn't feel crowded at all so and all within one facility, so it's not like Run Disney where you have to go through the Jostin Center. You got to go through the, field you know, the, the field yep. house. And nope, not at all. Here you kind of go through this main corridor area where you get your packet, then you go into like the huge, you know, basically carrier hangar of some sort, and you know can can hang out and get whatever you want. So, and they had some live entertainment and some speakers and stuff. Like Runner's World had a a stage set up with some speakers and, and, and different things. So any speakers that you watch or saw or any speakers of note? Um, so they had Bert uh, Yasso, um, who's kind of the big runner's world advocate. Um, you know, he's, I guess, one of their, their famous guys, has tons of running plans and stuff. Uh, he was speaking, but later in the day, um, there was no one kind of speaking earlier that we were that interested in seeing. So we kind of just skipped past that. Well, it's actually interesting. The day before the race, and I was pissed because we had like other plans of stuff we wanted to do, but they had shakeout runs with either uh, Bart Yasso or Meb was also doing a oh, shakeout really? run was- at this other kind of. Uh, he didn't. He wasn't at the expo, but he was, you know, out doing his his tour and promotion of his uh, of the sneakers there, nice. and uh, and so he had a, a shakeout run on Saturday morning too, which that was pretty been cool. Amazing. So, what would you have to do to have done that? Um, so there was kind of like a pre-registration thing that you had to fill out and I didn't find out until like a couple days before and obviously that was completely sold out so, or signed up or, or whatever it was. So I guess they did like a, a three mile shakeout run. Um, so maybe, maybe next time with MIP. <laughs> so we are going to go ahead and end it there. I don't know how long we've been talking, but it has been quite a while. And we're going to go ahead and continue more next week with the awesome Chicago Marathon with Chris as our guest. So until then, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you would like to have updates for more videos such as part two. Give us a thumbs up. And as always, thanks for watching and have a joyful day. Mm -hmm.